Hello everyone, back to you into our latest uh, video. So we've changed the focus of the Gaming Parts YouTube channel away from Star Wars and towards uh, sort of personal vlogging. So um, in the next few weeks and months I shall be doing videos, uh, uh, video vlogs about various topics and subjects that interest me as we uh, go along. And, and initially the thing that I'm focusing on is uh, coronavirus, is, uh, is COVID-19. Um, quite interested in sort of the science behind uh, uh, the coronavirus. I did the video yesterday, uh, which uh, which looked at um, a new symptom that's uh, emerging with uh, coronavirus, which is uh, happy hypoxia, where uh, patients have a very, very low level of blood oxygen, like 50%, that would normally render them completely unconscious, uh, but can actually be able to function relatively well. Um, and uh, it's a very, very strange uh, symptom, almost like altitude uh, sickness in a lot of ways. And that's what we focused on in uh, yesterday's uh, vlog update. But tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about um, when this virus first started, because there's an assumption, I think, through, through most people that um, the first known case uh, cases of coronavirus didn't arrive in Europe until like the end of January. And uh, it was first reported by China, of course, in, in Wuhan, uh, like late December. But it could well be that this virus has been circulating a little bit uh, longer than uh, most people realise. I noticed this from um, BBC News earlier on today, talking about uh, France's first known uh, coronavirus case was actually at the end of December. Now, this was before it was officially reported by China. China didn't report this virus officially, I don't think, until like New Year's Eve. I think it was New Year's Eve they first reported it. But by that point, or before that point, um, the virus was already in France that we know of. So I'm going to go through that uh, in a moment. Just say if you're enjoying the uh, vlogs on the uh, channel, then please like, share and subscribe and let us know in the comments what you think. Right, let's get into it then. And uh, this is from BBC News. The headline is uh, Coronavirus France's first known case was in December. Quotation. So let's see what they're saying. A patient treated in hospital near Paris on the 27th of December for suspected pneumonia actually had coronavirus, his doctor has said. This means the virus may have arrived in Europe almost a month earlier than previously thought. Remember, we have initially all thought that the virus didn't arrive in Europe until like the end of January. Uh, Dr. Yves Cohen uh, said a swab taken at the time was recently tested and came back positive for COVID-19. The patient who has since recovered said he had no idea where he caught the virus as he had not travelled abroad. So not been to China and picked it up. Uh, this, is, um, uh, this was uh, picked up purely uh, within France in late December by this patient. Uh, it goes on, knowing who was the first case is key to understanding how the virus spread. The World Health Organization, WHO, says it is possible more early cases will come to light. And spokesman Christian Ladimir urged countries to check records for similar cases in order to gain a clearer picture of the outbreak. The, Fra the French Health Ministry told the BBC that the government was obtaining confirmation on the case and said that it would consider further investigations if they proved necessary. France is not the only country where subsequent testing has uh, subsequent testing points to earlier cases. Two weeks ago, a post-mortem examination carried out in California revealed that the first coronavirus-related death in the U.S. was almost a month earlier than previously thought. Dr. Cohen, head of emergency medicine at Avincier and Jean Verdier hospitals near Paris, said the patient was a 43-year-old, 43-year-old uh, from Bombingay, northeast of Paris. He told BBC's Newsday programme that the patient must have been infected between the 14th and the 22nd of December as coronavirus takes between 5 and 14 days to appear. So actually, he, he, he was infected like the middle of December, potentially even uh, before Christmas. And it goes on uh, with a little bit more about this. But um, I just want to sort of focus on uh, on myself with this, actually, because uh, early on in December, I think it was I started um, becoming unwell probably around the, the 5th, 
4th, 5th of December. Uh, I had a very, very nasty virus myself um, back in December. And I'm beginning to wonder whether even I could have had the coronavirus like at the beginning of December. There's absolutely no way of knowing at this stage until we get an antibody test coming on stream. There is, there's no way of knowing. But certainly I had something very, very virulent. It started just with shivers, uh, very... Uh, benign sort of um, symptoms. I just had shivers and a little bit of a temperature. And then uh, after a couple of days, a cough started developing and the cough got worse. The temperature shot up. And at the time, I thought it was probably the flu. I thought it was probably influenza. Uh, but uh, as the um, illness progressed, I realised it wasn't flu because I've had flu a couple of times in my life. And uh, it was a distinct um Dif there was distinct differences uh, with this two classic sort of influenza. So uh, I had a very, very high temperature for around three days. Uh, I was sort of um, in bed pretty much for around three days. Uh, and uh, the temperature was, was the most striking thing about it, I think. The temperature went up to around 103, 104. I sort of stayed there. For, for around three days, had a very nasty cough as well, sore throat, uh, which is a little bit different to influenza. You don't tend to get as much of a sore throat with influenza. It tends to be, uh, it tends to be a little bit lower down. So it was sort of throat and upper respiratory system, along with a very high temperature. And then all of a sudden, it all just... Um, or just went quite quickly uh, in terms of the temperature. The temperature came down. I started to feel quite a lot better, although uh, it was several days before I could eat. But the cough just carried on and on. I couldn't get rid of the cough. I didn't have shortness of breath, though, and that is a classic for uh, COVID-19. So I didn't have that. But I definitely had a high temperature. I definitely had uh, a cough. I um, was uh, I was unable to eat for several days. I just felt very, very well. I had to stop doing uh, the day job, which, of course, is, is, is my weather videos. I couldn't do those for, for a few days, which is quite unusual for me. Normally, um, you know, with most things, I'll be able to sort of persevere. But, but with this, I just could not uh, carry on. I had to stop uh, for several days. And uh, I'm just wondering, uh, there's no way of knowing, as I say, until the antibody test, but I am wondering whether I could have had this as early as the beginning of December. And uh, certainly when the antibody test comes on stream, I'll be very, very uh, keen to get tested uh, to see whether potentially I might have had uh, the coronavirus or not. I know a lot of people as well who were ill during December. It's very strange because we got the general election going on. So there was a lot of people uh, moving around, canvassing, and eventually when we got to polling day, voting. So there was a lot of people moving around, perhaps a little bit more than would normally be the case in December. But I know a lot of people who, who were unwell with flu-like symptoms uh, during December. So maybe it was something else. Maybe it was uh, like, like, like a mild flu that was circulating. I don't know. But certainly something quite virulent was uh, doing the rounds in December. It will, when the antibody test comes on stream, will be quite interesting. Uh, so let me know in the comments whether you experienced any sort of flu-like symptoms during December. Because I've spoke to, spoke to several people who have uh, who have gone over the flu-like symptoms that they uh, uh, um, experienced during, uh, during December. Now, what's been quite interesting about this is that I have had a real job to get over it as well, this illness. So, um... It's only really in the last couple of weeks that the cough has finally started to calm down. If you've been watching the weather videos, you'll know that I've been coughing pretty much consistently, only a minor cough, but I've been coughing pretty much consistently from early December right the way through to like uh, a week or two ago. And the cough still hasn't completely gone, actually, even now, but it is a lot better than it was like uh, a week or two back. And I'm starting to get a little bit more energy back as well. That's the other thing that uh, I've had with this uh, illness that I had in December. Very, very low energy for many weeks afterwards. And it's only really been in the last couple of weeks, as the cough has finally subsided, that I have finally started to feel like I've got my energy back to where it was before uh, the start of December. I finally feel like 
uh, you know, I'm not going to have to uh, just stop and sit down or lay down um, every every sort of uh, couple of hours or something uh, when I'm active. I finally feel like I've got the energy to carry on being active uh, throughout the day. So that's something that uh, was quite unusual, I think, the, the way that, that, that it took a very, very long time to start feeling completely better from it. Of course, I am in, in my 40s now, so um, it is going to take me a little bit longer to get over illnesses but even with that i think the, the the length of time it's taken to finally get my energy levels b back shows that whatever it was that i had was something really quite uh virulent and uh, also quite unusual um after christmas i had to have some routine blood tests not for anything serious just due to where I am with my age, I start, uh, the GPs start doing uh, a little bit more testing um, once a year. So I just had a routine blood test and it came back with quite abnormal um, blood results. So I, I had a very elevated uh, white blood cell count. I also had a very elevated platelet count, uh, which which um, shows that I was uh, that I was recovering from or still fighting something quite nasty. And obviously that would be related to the virus. And I've had to have several blood tests since. Um, uh, checking platelet and white blood cell counts. Finally, at the last blood test, which I had done just before lockdown, things had started returning back to normal. Uh, but uh, for, for a while, I did have quite an elevated white blood cell and platelet count, which again is quite unusual, I think, um, following on from just like a cold or, or, uh, or something like that. So... I've had a bit of a run of it. I haven't told anybody about this course in, in the day job in the web video, but I have had a bit of a run of it, and uh, it, it does make you wonder whether it's possible that, that you could have had this and it could have been circulating uh, earlier. And I've spoken to several people who were sick in December with similar symptoms, um, and they are all wondering as well whether they might have had this. Now, thankfully, we might not have to wonder for much longer because this is at Sky News. This was from yesterday. Uh, coronavirus antibody test uh, with almost 100% accuracy could be in the UK in uh, in weeks. So uh, they're saying a coronavirus antibody test said to be 99.8% accurate has been approved for use in the US and could be available within weeks in the UK. And it goes on to uh, describe uh, what they're looking for and it indicates whether a person has gained immunity against the uh, disease. It looks very, very promising. It looks like this could be a little bit of a game change. It's still going through some... Uh, some verifications and uh, the NHS is still looking at it, but it does look as though this could be a very, very promising antibody test. Remember, there are two tests very important for coronavirus. The first test is uh, is looking at whether you have coronavirus when you are sick, and uh, they will uh, that will typically be a mouth or nasal swab. The second uh, test, which we do not have yet, is this one, which is an antibody test. So when you have uh, had a virus and you have fought it off, the immune system will create an antibody that will then attack the virus if, you, uh, if you're coming into contact with it again. So the immune system, remarkable, remarkable thing, the immune system, the immune system will recognise when that invader has, has invaded the body and an antibody uh, has, that's already been created will then be sent to kill um, the virus uh, pretty much uh, at, at, the, at the start of its infection within within. The body. Of course, this is the way that vaccines uh, work as well, to prime the immune system to attack the invader if it uh, comes back into, into uh, the patient's body. So this could be a game changer. And when this becomes, of course, initially it will be rolled out in stages, so it won't be widely available initially. But hopefully, like in, in two or three months' time, hopefully this will be widely available. You may be able to buy it from somewhere like Amazon, and uh, you just do a little, uh, do a little pinprick test, uh, see whether you've got the antibody uh, for coronavirus. If you have, then I assume you will send that to some uh, official, uh, to some official body, maybe the NHS, uh, maybe your GP. I don't know uh, how that will work, but you will then be. Um, 
uh, uh, taken uh, out of the uh, system and you will be put into like uh, a, a list that says you have had coronavirus and therefore it should be relative because we don't actually know all that well uh, how long the antibody will last for against coronavirus so how immune you are to it but certainly if you've got the antibody you should have some immunity to the coronavirus uh, in any case so then you'll be allowed to uh, i assume you will be allowed to start uh, going back to your normal everyday uh, life something like that anyway but when this becomes widely available i will be very very interested to get the antibody test and see whether or not i have antibody for uh, coronavirus hopefully i'm hoping that i have already had it and i won't have to worry about it as much um but of course for the time being we don't know so if you suspect that you might have had coronavirus in december do not assume that you had it you still have to do all of the social distancing self-isolating um uh, staying at home, hand washing, all of that is very, very important. Even if you suspect that you might have had uh, coronavirus uh, um, back in December, because there is just absolutely no way of knowing that you've had it or not. If you haven't had it, then obviously you could become very, very seriously ill and you could pass a virus on. Uh, to other people as well so uh, it is very important even if you are, you think that you might have had coronavirus as I think I could have done but I don't know but even if you think that you might have had coronavirus it is very very important that you still continue to do all of the hand washing all of the social distancing self-isolating and uh, follow all of the precautions stay at home protect the NHS save lives that is the message and until the antibody test becomes widely available uh, we've got to uh, take that message very very seriously but let me know in the comments what you think uh, did you have uh flu-like symptoms in december loads and loads of people that i know have flu-like symptoms in december and they're all wondering whether this was something separate to coronavirus or whether this was related to coronavirus so let me know in the comments uh what you think please like share and subscribe the video and we're going to be back with new content very very uh soon that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.